call the Germantown School District Board of Education meeting to order on September 9th, 2024 at 4.30 p.m. In a one uh, stand, if you're able, for a Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. One A official meeting notification, Dr. Reuter. Public notice of all meetings has been given by communication from the superintendent's office to the public, to those news media who have requested such notices, to the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel, Northwest Now, Express News, and the West Bend Daily News. Public notice has also been posted in schools throughout the district and on the Germantown School District website. Thank you. Item B, roll call. Here. Here. Brown. Here. Barney's here. Loth. Here. Medved. Here. Pollock. Here. Higginbotham is absent excused. Item two, approval of agenda. Motion to approve the agenda. Second. Mr. Barney with the motion, Mr. Pollock with the second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing nothing, that passes. Three, citizen comment. I believe we have one signed up today. Lisa? Hi, I'm, I'm Lisa Van Zummer. I'm from Kennedy Middle School. I'm the GEA rep for tonight. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. This is going to be a pretty quick meeting for you, but if you have any questions afterwards, let me know. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Item four, consent agenda. Uh, items A, approval of August 8, 19, 2024, meeting minutes. B, approval of teacher resignations. C, approval of teacher contracts. Motion approved consent agenda items A through C and move that teacher resignations in item B are only approved once liquidated damages are paid, if applicable. Second. What, Mr. Medvin with a second? They have been paid. Wait till comment. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Mr. Barney with the motion, Mr. Medved with the second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, that passes. Item five, policy committee. Mr. Barney. Yeah, thank you. Uh, policy committee met on August 26, two weeks ago. Uh, everything that we discussed at that meeting is coming forward as action items, so I will just move right into them. Uh, item B, uh, 5B, updates, or approval of updates and modifications to policy 5113 open enrollment program. Uh, currently, the policy states that the board will guarantee open enrollment for all currently enrolled students and siblings of currently attending students if space permits. This change comes forward with the priority to put the priority on our resident students, removes that guarantee. This prevents someone from moving into the district, establishing residency for a couple weeks, and then moving out and being our student through open enrollment for through graduation. This way the board will get to make a decision during our open enrollment process if we want to keep those students or Maybe we don't have space to keep them. We'll be able to make that decision annually. So policy committee brings forward a motion with a positive recommendation to the full board to approve the updates and modifications to policy 5113, open enrollment program interdistrict. It comes forward with a positive recommendation, does not need a second. Any discussion? Mr. Lowe. Sorry, I missed the policy committee meeting. Uh, I looked back, I opened Chris's email, it was one short line in there, and I guess I just blew past that. I, I completely missed it. But anyway, so um, what my question is, are we having an issue with this, that we're making a policy change, or that we can't leave it alone, or what's going on? So uh, to Mr. Barney's example, um, we, we receive a flat dollar amount for open enrolled students, and as you did as the board back in January, you approved 15 seats at the yeah. kindergarten level. And the, under the current, the previous language, um, that also included all current open enrollment students that were had seats to be approved. Um, however, to Mr. Barney's comment, there are times when people move in to the district, establish residency, let's say for a month, um, then apply for a tuition waiver for the to finish out the remainder of the year, which then gives them an open enrollment seat, which then when 
under the old language allows them to stay on even though they aren't a resident taxpayer. So this gives the board the authority annually to um, review the data related to open enrollment and determine um, if you'll approve all existing seats or they have to go back through the open enrollment process because at times that can bump sections up or down and um, that's non-resident <coughs> students that may do that. Okay. It closes a loophole too regarding uh, enrollment versus open enrollment. Correct. And to Mr. Bar Barney's point, puts the emphasis on in resident students and taxpayers. Very good. Any other questions? Okay. Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Be opposed? Hearing none, that passes. All right, I'll continue on. Uh, policy Committee 5C, approval of proposed new policy 2211, supplementary instructional materials. This new policy is being brought forward to define the expectations and processes regarding the use, approval, and publica publication of supplementary instructional materials. In addition, this policy requires that supplementary instructional materials are aligned with board approved standards. Policy, policy committee brings forward a motion with a positive recommendation to the full board to approve proposed policy 2211, supplementary <coughs> instructional materials comes forward with a positive recommendation and require a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, that passes. Thank you. Uh, item D, policy 0155 committees. Uh, there are a couple minor changes and one grammatical correction coming forward in this recommendation. Uh, first, the committee is recommending the removal of quote, shall not be a public official, end quote, from the description of the appointee, appointed members of Building and Grounds Committee. Additionally, Policy Committee is recommending that Finance Committee be updated to state that the committee shall meet as often as necessary, but not less than once per quarter. And this will put that requirement in line with personnel and policy committees. Previously, uh, Finance Committee was listed as meet monthly but as we found, there are some months where it may not be necessary for a finance committee to meet. So policy committee brings forward a motion with a positive recommendation to the full board to approve the updates and modifications to district policy 0155 committees. Comes forward with a positive recommendation. Does not require a second. Any discussion? Mr. Wilk. Yeah, part of this uh, policy committee thing, um, I, I don't really appreciate because the uh, when we were uh, we wouldn't have to remove the prior to regular board meeting if we were having two board meetings per month so I don't know when we went not in Chris's time but we went to one board meeting a month at some point in time and that was not voted on by the board it was not approved by the board and I've requested several times we go back to two board meetings per month and besides it gives the citizens an extra chance to speak per month you know we're not trying to stifle stifle uh, citizen input into board meetings and so this I, I'm I, I'm okay with it I'm not going to vote no but I think we should go back to two board meetings and, and at least a portion of this change for finance would not be relevant because the finance committee meeting would always be before the board meeting. You're taking it as immediately before the board meeting? Yeah. Right, but the language just doesn't say immediately before. Just any time before the meeting. That before. Month. If we have finance committee week one and don't have the board meeting until week Come three, on. it is before. We're not playing semantic games here. We know when the finance committee always was. And, you know, for a new finance guy, it's a little bit difficult to do the impromptu speech at the full board meeting when the finance committee meeting occurred just before the board meeting. However, over time you get used to it and you prefer it. So it's actually a little more difficult now depending on how many notes I have when the board meeting comes two weeks later and I'm looking over the finance material and I'm saying like, yeah, you know, we, we covered that, but I can't remember the fine details of it because I didn't write it down. Sure. So I'd just as soon have it the same night, you know, it's fine with me. Sure. Uh, if I you want to change it differently, you know, do something else when I'm no longer on the board, 
that's fine, but you know, for now, we should have two board meetings a month. And I know that's not on the agenda. We can't vote for it, but let's uh, let's put it on the agenda for uh, the next full board meeting. Are next we going month. to two next Monday? Yeah, we'll have two this month. We'll have plenty. We'll have plenty <laughs> of time. Uh, <laughs> no, um, so th that decision was made before I was on the board. I don't know what your discussions were around it. Um, there were none. We just yeah. went to it. So the structure that we have now and the reason why I personally like having our committee meetings um, either as needed um, or two weeks prior to the full board is it gives time to digest information before the full board has to vote on it and it doesn't um, put the we just had a discussion one hour before and now we're going to make a final full board decision um, obviously sometimes that happens because we're not going to slow the board business down just to get those meetings timed perfectly every time. Um, but I do like to have that time in between. Um, this is this policy actually is a perfectly good example. When they brought it up, I think in my discussion, I wanted everyone to weigh in on it at this level. Um, and I had some concerns about the optics of the language around it, because it makes it sound like we're gonna go to less meetings. Realistically, the expectation is finance is gonna meet just about every single month anyways. It's just saying, we're not in violation of policy <coughs> we miss yeah, because yeah. there's probably one or two months out of the year that we don't really need to um, in the language before we were actually would have been in violation of that policy and that's what I think Tom was bringing up um, but it took a couple of weeks to digest that and some other back conversations in regards to um, on what the purpose of that was and I think that that was in a good spot um, going forward I think the other decisions I would hate for Tracy's buildings and grounds to bring some RFPs forward one night and then two hours later we're voting on them at the full board when we don't have the time to really delve in and digest the full uh, packet information in regards to some of that stuff that's going to be coming forward. Realistically as long as the board's work is getting done and the committees are, 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 are comfortable with the situations they're in and they're able to complete the work I think we're in a good spot. I don't know how you would have two board meetings and still have that two week gap between committee work and full board decisions. It would, it would get very convoluted because you'd have, let's say we had finance tonight and we'd be waiting two weeks to have that topic at the full board, but we also have a full board tonight discussing two weeks ago was poli or whatever policy or whoever that would happen to be it would get pretty convoluted schedule wise I don't disagree with the uh, allowing the two meetings a month as far as um, allowing citizens giving them more time uh, to approach or discuss raise concerns or questions with us if there isn't a good way to do it though yeah. at committee meetings no I know that I'm saying what I, one workaround we could discuss further to change the board schedule that's usually an April action where you approve the board schedule mm -hmm. for the year we can call additional meetings but you set your monthly meeting another way um, Mr. Loth is if you held finance committee on the third uh, Monday of the month prior to the board meeting and the other committees could meet um, on the first Monday because usually finance is contingent on those other committees they have to recommend to the finance committee for TGN learning yeah. and you know as you know buildings and grounds for large purchases it is nice when we have multiple committee meetings all in one night because we seem to have the whole board gather then and everyone's looped on the conversations that are taking place um, I think we all do a good job of attending those and participating yeah, yeah. in them even though we're not necessarily serving on them um, right yeah I th and I think finance can be last on the committee meeting night I'm, I'm okay with that um, policy this last policy was on an evening when I didn't expect there to be a committee meeting and that's kind of how I blew past it in Chris's sure. email also so maybe uh, you might want to put that in bold print when there's just one line <laughs> I will and policy we have because of working with Neola held on a separate night because usually the batch of policy it's a longer, it's big, longer it's, meeting. It's a lot, a lot of information, usually some long discussions. And a lot of times it turns into, why don't we send this back or put a you know, table this. Yep. Since there's not a financial connection with policy committee, usually that's why it's a standalone. 
My concern is as long as the board and the, and the committees are operating in a respectful manner to conduct district business and we're not holding anything up because of ultimately I'm open to any schedule we would like as a board to take. Um, you can always have that discussion further. Yeah, I think uh, I, uh, I'm okay with what you're saying. I'll have to talk to uh, Brittany, I think, for uh, vouchers if it makes, I think it might make sense to do last month's vouchers in whole uh, for the committee meeting. Sure. First Monday of the month, it should be okay. Sure. Mr. So Benjamin? I think yeah, just a little historical reference. This does predate Chris. Um, uh, Soderbergh, when he was president, had this discussion. I remember the discussions that we had, and it was based around mainly what Russ had been saying, that we could have the committee meeting early in the month, and that a lot of the discussion happens there when you're making a decision on policy or whatever the building committee, whatever it happens to be, and then you have a couple of weeks before the meeting to digest it, with the understanding that if we needed a second meeting, we could always schedule one. It wasn't that we weren't going to have two meetings, Definitively, if we needed it for whatever reason with a time deadline, we could schedule another one on that committee night as well. That was the whole thought process behind it. And I think the board agreed to it. I don't know if it became a formal policy, but the discussion did happen back then. And I just kept the tradition going that was because it made Stousland. sense to me. Stousland. Yeah, Soderbergh and Brett Stousland. Right, and Brett, yes. So that's where that came from. Yeah, I just don't recall that evening. I, I could have missed the meeting. That too. Could be. I, I don't know. I don't. I don't know the date, but I haven't missed. <laughs> I don't many. remember who was there, but yeah, I haven't missed many. But right, you, you know, attendance isn't one hundred percent either. Yeah. So that's my. Yeah, we're good. We're, okay. we're good. Do you got anything for us? Nope. <laughs> Tracy. No, I'm okay. Tom. Nothing further on this item. Okay. Uh, no further discussion. Nothing. Okay. <laughs> Just smiling a little yeah, too much. Yeah, I see that. <laughs> um, uh, no further discussion. I, oh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, that passes. All right. Item E, updates and modifications to district policies 0100 through 9800.01. This was the, the large sum of the policies that reviewed at policy committee. I think there were 20 that we reviewed in this latest update from the OLA. Uh, a couple highlights. The attendance policy is updated to add a new, a new instance of excused absences as recommended by state law. Uh, class rank policy is updated to incorporate the class ranking requirements that we must implement for students to participate in the University of Wisconsin Systems Guaranteed Admission Program. Uh, the academic honesty policy is revised to incorporate concerns regarding artificial intelligence technology and the impact on academic integrity. Our social media policy is being revised to provide additional language to address the continuously evolving environment of social media and the potentially dangerous circumstances in which school staff interact with students through social media and related forms of electronic communication. Uh, food service policy is updated to reference the appointment of a special dietary accommodations coordinator and also add a grievance procedure related to disability related dietary accommodations. And transportation by private vehicle for district sponsored activities or trips is updated to provide additional options to uh, control private transportation for field trips. So given that background, Committee brings forward a motion with a positive recommendation to the full board to approve the updates and modifications to district policies 0100 through 9800.01. Comes forward with a positive recommendation, does not require a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, that passes. Item six, new business, 6A, discussion, action, Germantown School District, TID, tax incremental district. This is specific to number nine, vote. Uh, I guess that's me. Um, initially, and this is part of why we had an extra meeting this month, we were informed that um, 
village was going to be hosting a uh, meeting tonight to vote and take action in which we would have needed to provide Brittany with direction on which way to vote for that. Um, it sounds like that is now just going to be a presentation to that committee from Ellers as well as um, the Planning Commission will also receive a presentation and I believe they will be taking some action in regards to what their recommendation for the full village board on TID 9's expa potential expansion. Um, this evening, those are happening at 6 and 6.30. The 6.30 is the Planning Commission, and that is going to be a public hearing format. Um, tonight will be my first night actually serving as an advisory position on the Planning Commission, so it should be interesting to see how that goes. Uh, as far as it's a non-voting seat, but it is going to be allowed to uh, allow us to put some dialogue back and forth in real time when they're having some of their conversations um, and help us learn some of the needs and, and wants of the village as well as express some of our needs and wants from the school board level. Um, as far as TID 9 goes, uh, we could take action on it tonight. I'd like to hear those presentations and discussions um, at the village level tonight, probably before we do that. But we could also get ourselves into a little bit of a trick bag if they choose to um, take action on that next Monday um, at the full board or their, um, I'm trying to blank on the committee name here for Brittany. The joint review, joint joint review board. If the joint review board would have action next Monday, I don't know if they will or won't when that will be but Tom brought up a good point that earlier that that could potentially put us in not providing her effort so if we want to make a motion tonight I think it would have to be contingent on any further information we would receive from the village board this evening that makes sense um, I would I guess we'll open it up for discussion here as far as tip nine and any dis any kind of questions or conversation you guys would like to have as far as desires. Mr. Mullivan. Um, <coughs> I think they did a pretty good job presenting Update. last time we talked about much. this. Um, I think we have enough information. Unless they're well, talking about much. changing anything so from what was discussed <laughs> here, I don't know that we need to hold back. Um, just for the record, I'm going to be a no on this one for the same reasons I stated last time. Um, I guess my biggest issue, other than what I've stated before, is I'm not sure that the but or applies to this situation because we have an existing business that's expanding and I don't know that they're gonna not do it if we don't give them the TIF district. Um, having said that, I don't think it matters what we do because we can get outvoted anyway and we, that seems to be the historical case of what happens. So that's my vote okay. and my information. Thank you. Mr. Barney. I tend to agree with you. I'm not sure that the but four actually fits in this case. Now, this specific development may not occur without the TID changes, so maybe that's how they're linking it together. I mean, for me, I'm not opposed to development in the business park. That's where it should be, perfect place for it to be. On the surface, it looks like they're going to bring dozens of jobs to the area if that development goes through. That's great. I don't like the kickback that they get because if you didn't give them that kickback, the TID would close even faster than it's going to close after this amendment. And the school district benefits when you're it saying closes. It would close if they didn't get if they did the expansion but didn't give the kickback. It would close faster. Right, because we're the the TID closes once there's enough tax revenue to pay back all the upgrades that occurred, sure. well, if they're giving a kickback to the company until the TID closes, that's that's money that's not going to the TID. Sure. Um, the report to us was that the TID will close sooner than projected if this were to go through and all phases. Um, it will close, I'll call it less soon, if only one or two of those phases occur. Um, I think in, in our discussion when Mr. Krekelow was here from the village administration and and some other conversations that I've had with President Walters, 
um, was just forcing that conversation. Um, let's. I, it was unsettling to me for them to present this. It's going to close at this date, and it's going to be great, and all this is going to happen. And the reality is that will all happen if all of those phases are, but we need to acknowledge that maybe only phase one or two could occur and not phases one through four. Um, so just to force that entire, the totality of the conversation. Um, and one answer I didn't get, and is a little concerning to me on a foresight issue and planning issue, is this is the second time that TID's being expanded in two years from its origination. So they built a TID, then they expanded it, and I haven't gotten an answer on whether the initial expansion created the development they were hoping for, or if it didn't, and now they're expanding it a third time to push that ex expansion or what they're gonna hope is to be that expansion. Um, I would say, well, not knowing the total details of the first expansion of it, the second expansion, I'm a little more comfortable with Sterling Pharma as far as them being a partner within the district in the village. Um, they do seem committed to that side of it. They've partnered with us and, and worked well with, with, with us, so this is not a conversation around their intent or ill intent or any, anything like that. Um, I think we're pretty supportive of that company as well as they've been supportive of our school district. Um, I just think it's a matter of how the conversation is being handled at the village level. Some may not like that. I can tell you, actually, I actually know several people over there don't like that and pushing that conversation. But in the end, uh, we, we all are here to, to improve the village as best as possible. We're the two highest taxing authorities in the district between the village and the school district. So uh, we, we have to work together on some of this stuff. Um, in the end, we're working to improve the village as a whole, but but how we get there could be a little, or say how we uh, how we view how to get there could be a little different, and our needs might be different than theirs. It's not that that we're upset with them or, or whenever people want to float out there these days. Uh, it's just we have different needs financially as a school district, um, and we're in a different environment than what the village is. The village also needs to ensure that they have what well, this TID is there. This isn't a new TID, so they have to do what they can to ensure its financial viability. Um, I think that might be what's going on here, whether that's being fully discussed and open. I don't know. Maybe we'll hear more about that tonight. I'm kind of hoping that's the case, but we'll see how they frame the conversation. Uh, if this was a new TID, I think I'd be pretty adamant against it, but it's here. And if we have an option to potentially get this closed sooner with a company, I think the village has and the community has some pretty good trust in, maybe that's not the worst thing. I mean, that's kind of where I'm, I'm landing on it. Yeah, th this community and our taxpayers benefit once that tin closes. If this helps it close early, I would think that's a good thing. I may not like the, the plan details, but in the end, if it's gonna close early and then bring the benefit of that development, I, I can be on board with it. I think, I think if it was involving a company that might be a little less reputable for us, I'd be a little more concerned on if this brings about the, the closure they think it's going to. Um, I don't know if that's the case. I think we're probably in pretty good standing here with it being Sterling Farmer and their commitment to the village. In the community so I, I would hope I mean obviously they have internals that they're gonna have to hey we got this now does the mother company allow that to have development to happen here or not we don't know if it doesn't the TID closes as is right and if it does happen it closes a little sooner which will definitely help the school district financially down the road um, this is a little different than uh, the Holy Hill area TIDs, where they expanded that, and while that was a pre that was set to close early, they were pushing those dates back, and those dates kind of went out of alignment from some of what we think our future needs are going to be financially. So I think that's a little di different of a discussion. I was pretty adamant no on that. Um, I don't necessarily see the same same issues with this one. Um, now that, like I said, that this TID is here, it's how can we manage it? So that's managing. 
I don't know if anybody else has anything on that, Mr. Lawson. My belief is man does not live by development alone. And uh, for each TID that uh, they've come up with since 2012, April of 2012, when I was first elected, I was hoping that it would be the last. And uh, so if they want to modify nine, I guess I'm okay with it. But the uh, bottom line is, is stop doing TIDs. The reason why I say that is um, when we got raked over the coals with the developer in the Kinderberg Estates property, I had made the statement if we had done it as a TID, it would have blown right through the village without any problems at all. Instead, we had a former you know, village board member uh, talking to the neighbors of the Kinderberg Estates property and put the kibosh on the original plan. So the board gets criticized for not selling it for the original price. But that original price and the developer's engineering you know, put in the utilities and things, and that those those costs were going into the cost of each lot. Now that's the way this industrial property should work also. You put in the roads, you put in the utilities, and those costs go into the price of the acreage that the company buys. That means pay your taxes, buy the property, build your facility, and don't expect the school board to pay your taxes for the next 20 years in the form of this TID. Now, this either has to stop or we need to start running individuals for the town board that will not approve TIDs because these TIDs are wasteful. And I, I'm, I'm impressed that you found the formula to calculate what it costs each taxpayer to have a TID and I didn't check your math, but since uh, Brittany said you were correct, I'll just go with the number, and I believe it was $200 per home, average home in Germantown, that we, the taxpayer, are paying for these industrial property A little over three, yes. what, what is it? A little over three. Oh, a little over three. Okay, so I was off by 50%. Um, so this, this is not okay. You know, this isn't how... My understanding of how business or purchase of property works, okay. you, you know, this is this is completely. Yeah. Tids are for blighted property, and for all I know, there might be some blighted property in Germantown, but it's not what we're talking about in Tid Nine here. I think um, big question I've got is why does the district care so much? The school district, why do you care so much? It's a financial impact. We're, we're, we're not receiving tax revenue while these TIDs are open, right? right? And that hurts our bottom line. It hurts Chris's and Brittany's ability to manage the district in a financially beneficial. So when programs are getting cut, now we do, if they close successfully, there is a little bit of a windfall at the back end of it. But these aren't two-year, three-year, four-year plans. These are decade-long, you know, we, we will likely all be gone by the time this uh, closes, and I'm not saying passed away, just not yeah. board members anymore. Um, so, in, in, and I watched some of the village meetings, um, and Kreklo responded to, to our, my line of questioning uh, at, at his village meeting. Um, I think for the most part, he, he, he explained or attempted to explain um, what he believes to be the truth behind some of that. Uh, he did offer some information that I didn't find to be completely factual and that, in fact, she offered that it doesn't impact us financially at all because we receive state aid and state aid has nothing to do with that. Well, we use more than state aid to run the school district, uh, significantly more. Um, and he just chose to... Um, either not understand that or not present that portion of it. I think it's a big portion of why we have, and you'll see on our next item here, kind of doing a board member exchange program uh, between, between them and us uh, to help build some of this understanding out. 
Um, but the, the, the citizens need to understand it does financially impact us anytime we're deferring tax revenue for decades um, in, in a district that we haven't received the same funding from the state level and we're competing against districts surrounding us. People ask us, why aren't you paying teachers more? Or why aren't you doing this? Or why isn't this program here? This is some of that. This is impactful. It matters. Um, in the end, I'll go, I can lean back into, we can kind of have three different discussions. One, should we ever have a TID, right? But that's not the discussion we have at hand. How to best manage the TID is, that we do have is at hand right now. Um, and that's a slightly different discussion. Um, people need to understand in the village, because we disagree with them, we're not fighting. It's, it's important to have this dialogue and conversation. And they need to understand the financial impact it brings to us. They have means to replace those deferment revenues. And we don't unless we would run, and I don't even want to use the R word, referendum here whether it's operational or construction, to help def to, to defer those or replace those uh, deferred revenues. That's a fact. They can be upset about that conversation. One thing I won't stand on my position on this board is for them to have half the conversation and omit those facts. That's not okay. Now, we'll work together and we'll manage this as best we can with them. We'll build those relationships out and continue to do that. That's a goal I've had since you all voted me in as president. I've been working on this, um, we call it the, the board member exchange program for the better part of four months now, trying to get it done and it's finally coming to fruition. I'm excited about it. Um, and we'll see how that relationship goes and builds. But um, well, here we are. I just want to add to what you're saying about <clears throat> the dilemma for the school district is it's an immediate financial hit. It could be a long-term wound for us, but we don't know. I mean, we'll, we'll never, we'll never experience that down the road. It'll be too late, and then, like I said, everybody here will be gone by the time that comes to benefit the district. The other issue I have is that you have other communities that are represented by the school district, but not the city of Germantown. So they have no say so in any of this. They have no voice. They can't. And we say have Pope Germantown. Jackson. Exactly. Pope Richfield. Jackson, Richfield. And, and their 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 students, to your point, are right. We we have and less money less money to educate their district. children, and but they don't get a vote. When there's only four taxing authorities that get a vote in these TIDs. It's us, so we do have to, to your point, speak up for those communities exactly. as well. That was my only point. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for bringing that up. It's a thought I had, and there's a lot to discuss in it. So, um, I'm okay with. Um, taking a vote on this if you guys want to I would prefer if it came with some sort of in lieu of further information we may receive tonight at the village meetings um, but this way it would arm ourselves or arm Brittany to be prepared for next week if that's potentially or shortly in the future so we don't have to hold an emergency meeting just to provide her with our vote I don't know how you all feel about that I can't think of the proper language to put in a motion other than we do our motion as normal, either approve it or to have the district vote be a no. And if we get more information, then we'd have to reconvene and. Yeah, I think we could just. It, yeah, I think that again. would be the motion would be um, to approve or deny however you want the motion to be. Um, in lieu of further information provided at the Joint Review Board and Planning Commission uh, meetings this evening, yep. give provide Brittany with X direction uh, for her vote when needed. And then we'll be here next Monday at a full board if we need to. We, that'd be an opportune time. Yep. It's that or it's more that, that or, this it's, week. We could add that. It's too. that or we would table it, but then that'll put us in. We have two. We have a lot of committee meetings and a full board and I don't know if we could get all that done and get somebody over there if that would I don't think the vote's going to be next week for them it might be at the village but I don't think it'll be for the joint review board um, but if in case that it was um, I just want us to have the right and if need be if there's approval of a yes or no vote this evening 
need be, this could be added to next week's board agenda, given what transpired this week. And I would ask, um, I know we did this on the last the last call around, I would probably ask for a roll call vote on it. If you would all appease me on that, just for consistency's sake on these. Yeah, it's fine. Does anyone want to give a stab at the uh, promotion? And then there, there could be more discussion too. I'm not trying to force that, but if there's any further discussion. Well, I, I think as far as TIDs are concerned, uh, for blighted property, no problem. You know, go ahead and do it. For greenfield construction, don't do it. You, you know, it's not what it's for. Just because the state allows it, I, I believe state law allows it, doesn't mean it yeah. should be. I think some done. of that's changing too. There's law around TID that's being changed. Hopefully. I think it's... Hopefully yeah. to restrict it. Yeah. It's then we don't have to have this discussion at a school board meeting. And it's not that we're not... It's not that we can't get along with the village board. It's just that the tax revenue that we would have collected up front if the financing was done as the Kinderberg Estates financing was done by the developer and that cost added into the cost of the lot, it's hard to know what those dollars are when it's industrial property. You know, most of us know a little more about homes and home property values than industrial property. How, how do we know or even any of, our, any of the tax paying citizens know? We don't. You know, so the lost tax revenue to the school district is a, a bit of an unknown but fortunately you came up with a calculation of three hundred dollars three hundred dollars per home in this district is a lot of money to pay for uh, industry to come into this area i think they'll come into this area anyway uh, because it's a great area and we've got a great workforce uh, we don't have to hold a carrot out in front of these developers to get them to want to come here. Sure. Um, you know, it's just, just the way it is. So in that regard, uh, the Kinderberg uh, estate's development was done as best as it could be in the correct way. A TID was not the way to do it and of course yeah, well and especially said, for residential right? yeah and and when I mentioned the thing about the TID of course I couldn't couldn't have been any more sarcastic than I was so you know I think the town board has to quit running TIDs for whatever reason I don't know why they're so popular but they need to stop this and if they don't we're going to find citizens to run for the town board that won't do TIDs. You know, it's, it's, that's what's got to be done. I'll leave, oh yeah, I'll leave that side to the individual citizen that <laughs> wants to run. That's not going to be our business. Well, I'm not running for the town yeah. board. No, I know. I'm just steering the conversation a little bit back here. Um, did somebody want to take a track? Unless I can. I'll make a motion for the Germantown School District to vote yes on the Joint Review Board TID 9 proposal. The board will reconvene to reconsider this motion if new information is received prior to Joint Review Board action. I'll second. Say may reconvene. Yes, correction. The board may reconvene to reconsider this motion if new information is received prior to Joint Review Board action. I'll second. Mr. Barney with the motion and Mr. Medved with the second. Any further discussion? What? Mr. Brown? Um, the, the motion you just read, you said vote yes. Then Brittany is our representative on the Joint Review Board. We would give her that direction to vote yeah. in favor of the proposal. Our vote's just to tell her which way to vote when she shows up there. Right, are we telling her which way to vote when she shows up there, pending any other Yes. Yeah, yeah. Affirmative. Saying yes to the his, his is saying yes. Yes, that's my, that's my motion, is to approve the TID changes. Yeah, and I thought there was a discussion that you were thinking about a roll call vote on this. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yes. 
And then we'll, we'll run roll call vote pending discussion. Okay. Any other discussion on the topic? Tracy? Yeah. I think I've vented. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Mr. Barney, you'll run the roll call. Yeah. Then. Ewart? Yes. Brown? No. Barney's a yes. Loth? Yes. Medved? No. Pollock? Yes. Four votes. Four yes votes. And two no votes. Okay. So the vote will be yes, pending any further information uh, gleaned from village meetings. Motion passes. Motion passes. <coughs> Thank you. S uh, new business 6B discussion and action to appoint a community member to the Buildings and Grounds Committee. That's also me. Um, this is, we've discussed this a little bit already. Uh, as far in the policy was brought forward, we had to change some information or some language in that to ensure this. Um, I would like to present to you guys or to the board a uh, Meg Cuts, village trustee to fill our vacancy mm -hmm. on the uh, buildings and grounds to kind of complete the uh, exchange program here. I don't, I don't know, that's the, the best way I could come up with it. I think it's a positive thing. She has a background in building, residential building, and a lot of the, the information that's gonna be coming through and work that's gonna be done in buildings and grounds around capital improvement. Um, those decisions are gonna be impacted based off of uh, residential developments within the village and what we see coming down the line so I can only see that further in that communication and a better understanding being built um, I'm excited I've, I've talked with her a couple of times on this topic I think she's she's excited to do it she's a newer trustee um, so she brings some of that and new energy there and a little step back from some of the I guess I best I could call it animosity that the, the two boards have been accused of sharing at times. Um, the hope here is to continue to build those relationships, build that understanding in a timely fashion, taking out the uh, the assumptions that go into some of this or the third party. Did you hear what who and who's what what they're doing and what we're doing and what they said? Um, I can only see it as a positive for for the the committee and for our board uh, moving forward to bring her in. I don't know if anyone has any questions on that. Mr. Wolf? It, it's not clear in the material. Is this position a voting position on the committee? This would be the standard position that we've had occupied in the past. So okay. it's advisory. So it is voting. Then. It is a voting position. Um, That's what it was in the past. You would have a four panel vote. I thought it was just yeah. advisory. Yeah. No, the citizen uh, rep. Had voting, had voting power. Privileges, you know. I, I don't see that being a problem. Um, I, I other than that, you could get into a lock to 2 2 we, we vote. We never had a 2 2 vote, but yeah. you know, it could happen. Certainly could. So I heard, you, I think I heard you say you're on the planning commission mm -hmm. and would not have. Yeah, they votes. changed. They went through some, change, some changes in the last couple of meetings. <laughs> And they made that. Uh, Frank Lord was our designated person. I'll be honest with you, I was a little uncomfortable with that, a, given his position. Not that he couldn't handle it, but that his, his position within the district um, in the discussions that I'm hoping to, to push at that level, I don't think would be the best for an employee. It would be better right. for a board member. Um, Mr. Barney. Uh, our committee's policy updated this evening says that all members of the committee other than the director of business and auxiliary operations shall be voting members. Voting members. Okay. So is it fair for you to be on the planning <coughs> commission but not a voting member uh, when we've got this position? I'm here? not looking at it as whether it's fair or not fair. I'm looking at it with best interest. I just want to just I want to see to the table in a discussion um, and be able to interject some discussion into some other conversations. Um, would it be nice? Sure. The village doesn't see that fit um, to be that way. That's fine. Um, but being at the table to be there part of the discussion and make that known and be on record for the village and for the citizens to see and understand some of our, our stances, I 
think is a positive, positive thing. I think it's a first step. We can certainly yeah. make changes on our side if we see that we need to make a change there, and yeah. maybe we can approach the village to see if they want to make some changes. So, I, in in the end, it's about building the relationship. Um, there's always been discussion of these like joint having joint board meetings. Quite frankly, that's nothing more than a vanity project. It's kind of a joke. What are we going to talk about? Okay, nothing. What decision are we made? Nothing. Okay, we all showed up and took a photo op. I have no interest in that. These are two positions that can can affect discussion and change in real time and in continuous, not just one off meeting for the year. These are monthly meetings. So we're yeah. close to monthly. <laughs> to, to that point, this goes a lot further with starting those discussions rather than a joint meeting yeah. where we would not necessarily have joint items to discuss whereas this will happen on a monthly basis on the village side and as often as building committee meets on our side and neither of these posts are, are meant to be sacrificial or set to the whipping post so to speak for the members that are crossing over um, that, that I've made um, tempted to make known in my conversations with the village this is a good intent, so please send somebody with your best foot forward to, to improve these relationships. It's really the goal here. I agree. The The fact is, is if you look back a couple of years, our interactions, no matter how, how you want to describe them, joint or, or these committees, really was minimal. But the fact that we now have a seat, non-voting seat at the table of the Planning Commission, now that Hopefully this passes, we bring Meg onto buildings and grounds, park and rec, having those discussions. The fact is, is that that is progress compared to a number of years ago with regards to the interactions and the positive interactions with the village. So I think this is the planning commission and this is uh, two steps in the right direction. Any other discussion? Take a motion and uh, the new member of our Buildings and Grounds Committee. I'd like to make a motion to approve the appointment of Meg Cuts to serve as the Buildings and Grounds Committee Community Representative for a two-year term beginning September 9th, 2024. I will second that. Mr. Pollock with the motion, Mr. Lowe's with the second. Any further <coughs> discussion? We've had quite a bit. Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. That passes. Welcome aboard, Ms. Cuts. Item seven, I'll take one final motion. Move we'll adjourn. Second. Mr. Barney with the motion. Mr. Pollock with the second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, that passes. We are adjourned at 523.